First of all, I want to say thank you for showing up tonight. Thank you for coming. I think it shows respect for this audience. I think it shows respect for the listening audience. And indeed, I think it shows respect for women. How would you distinguish yourself from the two candidates who did not show up? We'll go Gessler, Cop, Beaupre. Now the fun begins. Well, I, I think it shows we're more respectful of the audience <laughs> and, and the people listening and the idea of public debate. Here's the other thing, though, that I think is important that oftentimes gets missed. Uh, part of my job, I view it as sort of being a vacuum cleaner of ideas. I don't have all the answers, but people out there do. And I like going out, collecting ideas, and listening to people. And there's, there's never been an event where I haven't learned something, where someone pulls me aside or talks to me, or there's a question that spurs a thought. And I learn more. I learn more about solutions for this state. I learn more about the, the problems we need to solve um, and get better ideas. And my job is to take those ideas and go back and, and turn them into reality. And so the candidates that didn't show up, uh, they are poorer for it, and we are poorer for it, because they are not learning, they are not getting those ideas, uh, they are not taking them back with them in order to improve our state. That's what's just as important, and that's why it's important to be out on the campaign trail. Mike. Thank you. I believe Tom should be here. Tom should be here. Most of us probably know Tom. Certainly all, the th all three of us up here do know Tom. You know, this, this process really isn't about us. Um, it is about our state. It's about the future of our state. And when a candidate will not subject themselves to this rigorous process of vetting, describing their views, standing up and defending their views, um, I, have real, I have real questions about that. Tom should be here. The governor, the governor should be here. You know, I, I served with John Hickenlooper I was the Senate Minority Leader, and I, I met with the administration staff, usually the, the governor or some others, um, just about weekly. And uh, this I learned from him. He's a nice guy. He's somebody you'd like to hang out with. Often, you leave the room after having met with John Hickenlooper, and you have no idea what decision he's going to make or if he's going to make a decision. Mastering the art of motion without consequence is no way to lead the state. I wish he were here to talk about that. Bob? I'll leave my friend Tom to uh, Tom. Uh, relative to uh, John Hickenlooper, I was asked the day I announced uh, for this office uh, the rather obvious question. So what would you do different than uh, John Hickenlooper? And I, I just volunteered, show up. You know, <laughs> kind of your question. How about start there, just by showing up, kind of what Mike just said. Uh, what is John Hickenlooper's agenda? Anybody in the room know? Uh, what's his signature piece of action, item, word? None. None. He reacts. And oftentimes when he reacts, it's wrong. Lots of times when he should react, as in taking the oath of office to enforce the laws of the state of Colorado, he grants a reprieve and says, Let's, uh, let the next guy deal with it. So I think, uh, Krista, out of respect for people, as well as just um, actually doing the, the job you asked for in the first place, start by showing up. Uh, and I learned that a long, long time ago in the dairy business. You don't get that done if you don't show up. Show up. <laughs>